two mics this time, so we're getting a little fancy here on Falcon fancy. Friday. All right. We learn from our mistakes, and we succeed uh, at our new tries. So today we got this pretty cool track um, that Lamont did for a TV show, um, and you can hear it playing in the background. It's a, it's a Disney show, just to be clear. <laughs> Bam. You're like, this made me so happy, like I want to ride <laughs> Get on a roller coaster. I'm like, yeah, it's Disney. So, uh, Lamont, tell us a little bit about the song and the process behind uh, making it, and yeah. Wow. Okay. So um, I got the call. I'm in Nashville in my place. I get a I get a call that says, "Hey, you want to do a Disney theme song today?" I'm like, "Yeah, Who doesn't, <laughs> right? why not? Come to the crib right now. <laughs> Take my pajamas off." <laughs> <laughs> so we get in. We do the record. You know, it wasn't uh, it the 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 uh, it said hip hop. So that's why they thought of me in Nashville, which I'm very grateful for. And um, we we get to going into it. They said they wanted something that was kind of uh, old school hip hop, but kind of Macklemore like. And I'm like, so I've, I already know old school hip hop is in my DNA. But Macklemore like, I was like, let me go listen because I, I know that don't mean just corny. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that as a jab, but I'm just like meaning it as like from an old school hip hop and Macklemore. Yeah, take yeah, myself by moving different. on. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm listening. I'm like, oh, it's horns, like horns, and then da da da. So the track was, was that was super easy, but the to nail the song that was actually I take that back the track wasn't super easy. The song was interesting because the the show is called Coop and Cami Ask the World. So Coop and Cami Ask the World it comes on Disney Channel tomorrow, by the way. So if you have any nieces and nephews, or you just like watching young stuff, go for it. Yeah. Um, it's about like a single parent mom. She has these two kids, and they uh, they have a popular blog. And they ask their blog, like, what, what, like, um, like they get in trouble is, should I, um, would you rather, uh, lose your phone for a month or, you know, or don't eat pizza or something like that? And of course, like, most kids are gonna be like, well, I don't know. This is up to you. I would probably choose pizza. Yeah. Over your phone? Well, yeah, because I would just go get another one on the side because I'm a hustler. <laughs> and I would just hide it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm a, I'm, As a kid? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was a chubby kid growing up, so I might, you know, say, lose the phone for a week and, eat the pizza but hey, that's what i'm saying <laughs> and that's what makes the show good because it's different personalities it's different things now if it was a spanking or a punishment i'm taking a spanking every time because it's like, right oh, that's not... temporary yeah temporary but a punishment oh you can't leave the house oh, at the school dance man yeah so anyway <laughs> let's get back into the production so like the most this was the most challenging production that I've, I've ever done mainly because they kept changing it and at first it was like oh it needs to be like 50 seconds to a minute or something. Then it was like, oh, we need 50 seconds. Then it was like, okay, we love this 50 seconds. This is solid. Can you change the hook? Okay, make it more like this. Boom, we changed the hook. But I think we, our team is split up. Can you go back to the original hook? Which is like, ah, oh, I gave it to you right at first, huh? Uh -huh. But then it's funny. you got to go in. We changed that. We went back. And then it's like, okay, it's perfect now. We're like, Perfect now? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. Start over, right? No. no. Okay, now take this 50 second perfect and make it a 40 second perfect. Right. But don't change anything. That's when I was like, oh, Lord. You want me to be a wizard, okay. Yo, so it was so challenging. So what, you know, I paced around the house and stuff and tried to figure it out. And I, and I came with that with the concept of speed ramps. So intro is going to be, first half of the intro is a, is a certain speed. The second half is a, is a certain speed. Then it just like doo, doo, doo. it just kept, keeps going, and then it was like I had to find out how to make the speed ramps not feel like speed ramps. So I caught a couple of my friends, and I was telling them like, "Yo, so you know the saying if you can cook a frog if you turn it up slow enough." So I'm trying to cook a frog and lose ten seconds. That's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, I, so then it's. Then I start shaving off random things, like the first instead of the first beat going, boom, dun 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 dun, dun it was like boom, dun, 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 like little pieces of like mm, just taking that butter knife and just making slithers mm -hmm. all through, and everything was like, okay, I got point two from that, okay, I got another point two, I need five more things, and like we're gonna add this up. Yeah, it it was like crazy, man. But we finally, and then so the okay, so the hardest part once I got into the speed ramps and got all that right. It was the tail, like, dun, dun, dun. 
and you need like a little bit of like verb. You need that verb for sharp to make speed. Then it took away from the impact of the ending. And and like with TV and film, like the endings matter. Like you can't just like do fades or little things. They want like a ding or a symbol or a backflip yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was tough, but we ended up getting it and I got my first. Disney theme song. And I've wanted that for over 10 years. I've wanted to do anything with Disney for a long time. Yeah. Hannah Montana. Uh, that's, and that's great. And it's cool that we're touching on on this because most people, don't, I don't think, realize that this is a whole side of the music industry that is accessible to us as creators, right? Yeah. And it's a completely different, like, mindset. Like, when you're going in and producing songs with an artist, you know, you're like, we're trying to catch a vibe, and, you know, you're trying to create this piece of music right yeah. this record that's going to be you know listened to over and over again but when you're creating for a show there's all these boundaries you have to stick in and, and then it's like it could be what the lyrics are going to say it can be like time constrictions right there's all these things that you kind of got to do but at the end of the day it's still just making music and it's a paycheck and it's really cool to be able to have your stuff with the big you know the mouse right yeah the mouse <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point because it is like you do have like a new set of rules and, and a this and that. But when you think about it too, like, cause I, I feel like I specialize in artist development. There are a lot of unspoken rules or spoken rules with artists too. Like, okay, she's super Christian. She ain't gonna talk about this or, you know, or she wants to feel like she's saying this or he wants to, you know, be the new gangster dude. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're not gonna make a real vulnerable record. You're gonna be like, I'm crying on this track. Like, no, no, right. <laughs> no, no, no. You want her to be like, I'm pulling on this gat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, it's rules. It's, I think what it is is TV and film is its own set of rules. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, thank you for that. Hopefully that was good information. Uh, I think it's really cool that when we get something different to play with. So I'm going to play around and just do my thing um, and just mix it how I would. Um, just for some fun and kind of go over my techniques of making things sound cool. So, um, yeah, let's start having fun. So I, I, I just set up some drum buses or, or some buses real quick. Um, and I'm just going to start building the, the cake as you will from the bottom up. So cool thing about a track that doesn't have a lot of instrumentation in it, you can kind of make things really loud. So I'm going to start with the kick and snare. And you can see he has the kick and snare on uh, one track. So this is kind of a cool uh, thing to show. There's a few things that you can do to address this when you get um, files that have a kick and a snare or multiple instruments on the same thing. Um, track is it's really common for uh, that to happen and have a kick and snare or a hi-hat or something but since they're all kind of clean on the kick and snare track there's a thing in Pro Tools um, for those who are using Pro Tools called Strip Silence so you can select a piece of uh, the audio here like the kick and snare and then I can go to um, the edit window and hit uh, Strip Silence or Command U for you um, uh, shortcut nerds and then you can see here um, these boxes come up around the waveforms and it allows you to uh, strip them or if I hit strip here you can see it takes a um, in the record or, or in the track and then or if I could say extract right that will leave just this um, the, no, the empty spots and if I did separate it will just create uh, trims or, or edits at those points. So then I could go through in each one, like you see above the two tracks above this here that I just did the example on, uh, and I just separated the kick and the snare so then I could uh, EQ and compress the kick and snare separately. So you can see that. And then I have the snare on that. So that's a, a way to address that common issue, but it's not really an issue, it's just how they decided to do it. So, uh, Alright, cool. So I'm going to shut up and...
First thing I like to do is use this NLS channel to do some modeling. And if you hear the music pumping while we're talking, uh, we're using this new system here uh, at a home and we're trying to get the music to sound clear and you don't hear the audio coming back through the speakers through the mic when I'm not speaking. So give us a some thumbs up out there if we actually are succeeding at that. So, um, since that track is, let's see, I can just go ahead and consolidate this real quick. So then I can get, I can turn this audio down a little bit here. I'm also going to go into, port so I can get my, and turn my waveforms up. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Get my gain structure. Okay. Yeah, see, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in there, so we're going to play around with that. That's fun. Bruce, who had the week before I had to deliver, man? Uh, <laughs> on,
All right, I'm going to sidechain the uh, kick drum here to the, the 808 so that they can cut through a little bit with each other. So you about to show everybody how to sidechain in Pro Tools? Yep. Dope. So show them how to do that. So I have my kick. He about to show everybody how to sidechain in Pro Tools. So I'm going to have my kick here. I'm going to send it out bus 11, and I'm going to make the bus 11 the input on the C6. So I'm just going to do it uh, on around 60 hertz on the, uh, the 808 here to see if we can get that to talk well. So you can see on the C6, if you activate uh, on the bottom here, you'll see side chain. It says internal. I'm going to make it external. Okay. And then that will allow it to take this side chain input at the top. Oh, it's just taking input from 11, bus 11. Yep. Which is, I send it from the kick. So then you can see it comes, it is now activated. So, I mean, right there, you can hear it. Walls are shaking. I love it. Okay, so now this is a gain structure thing, so I'm just going to start getting my gain structure looking good. So what I might do is I'm going to duplicate this because I want to get, I want more kick. So I'm going to duplicate the kick here and I'm going to use this plug in that has a really sharp um, roll off. Don't say sausage fattener. No, not sausage fattener. I'm going to say uh, fab filter. Oh, fab filter is awesome. Yeah, this is the shit. So I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to roll this off here. And sometimes this gets funny, so we might have to... Let's see if we have to... See, then I can yeah. just kind of roll this off. Just try to get this kick drum. And then I'm going to send it to... Um, I'll make all my stuff sound better in my face. Uh, well, <laughs> hopefully next time you need something mixed, uh, yeah. you can holler at me and we can do this together, right? For the record, okay, just uh, while we're live, for the record... I said, listen, can I get someone to mix this record since it's approved and it's going to be the next new Disney theme song? They said, no, your mix is approved. And I'm like, done. Ah, oh, man. That's the best words ever. No, it's You cool. just want to hear that. Yeah, no, I didn't actually want to hear that because I was like, I'll pay for my stuff to sound a certain way because it's out forever. Yeah. And, you know, I and you. I have, like, situations like this, and it's like, oh, you know, what? I'm honored that people who do business – that aren't in the music business think that my rough mixes are good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then it's like, but they're, the reason that mix engineers have a job is because everybody knows they make everything sound better. Right. You Heck know yeah. What I'm saying? Like, Preach. Yeah. Preach. So, you know. Learn from this man. I he wish speak I was the arrogant truth. enough sometimes to be like, yeah, I mix, I mix it myself. I do this, but it doesn't matter when you compete with people who probably don't even produce as good as you, but they got a better mixer. That, 
how how would you, hey. that's really true, right? Hey. You cannot really every there's sounds sound so good already nowadays off of splice and all of this where people are getting it. But people mixing that stuff before it goes. Totally yeah. right. So that you know, if a good mix that's insane. Yeah, good mix is a good mix. But at the end of the day, you want for as a mix engineer, I want to hear. That sounds good the first time I send it to him, right? Yeah. But it doesn't work. <laughs> I know, totally. It's but personal preference, though. Like, it does sound good the first way you send it. But right. they might have wanted to hear, oh, this line I said is my favorite line because it reminded me, like, when I was courageous as a child when I was seven. I need to hear that's that. That's too more. low. Right. Turn right. up, put some reverb and put some right. effects on it because right. I want to feel special within myself for this. The listener don't care. Half they the time care. they're intoxicated or they on the drive. They're they about to skip you anyway. It don't matter for all that, but that's. That's the business. Yeah. The first one with something extremely wrong, like a vocal super loud or that snare hit, like real stupid loud right in the middle of the song or something. So that's the one thing they focus on. Uh, and then you have the one that you wanted to send them anyway. Send them next. Oh, yeah. I can't believe uh, I got so that good. one. That is right? so good. And then you send them they're like, oh, yeah, it sounds great now because all they could hear was the real dude, thing. Dude, <laughs> right? So good. I learned something similar to that. That's so good. I would be like, send me the mix. Then it makes you really want to sing, man. Yeah, but, uh, yeah exactly. But, uh, you know. <laughs> but I do something similar with tracks. Like if I have a track or a song and I know like this is the one you're supposed to do mm -hmm. or this is the one I really think that this artist should do, I do not play that one first. I'll play like two or three and just put it in there. So it's like if it's like from like a spades or cards perspective, it's like I throw a bunch of twos in and then I put a, a queen or a joker in right and be like okay boom and they always just gravitate towards the top two that i feel like they're supposed to do anyway right right that's good it's, that, it's similar it's yeah similar. and i had the debate just to touch on that like when you send people tracks right they're like always put your best song first i'm like i don't know if i want to put that one first you know true i want to get to song like two or three and then because they're always going to be like ah, i don't know on the first one or two yeah, you yeah. know and it goes, it's, it's a little bit of like, well, you don't think you're good enough to hear the right thing the first time? Yeah. You think you got to work harder? You think you got to be here for two hours shuffling through tracks, grabbing a piece of this hook, mm -hmm. a piece of this snare, mm -hmm. a piece of a belch from over here and go mix it all together? <laughs> and now you got to hit, like, why can't it just be given to you? Right. Like, you're good enough for that. Yep. Preach. Well, come on. We all deal with it. All right, let's go. I'm going right. to stop your mixing. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> all right. Let's see. All right. I'm going to put this over here. That's right. So I got my kick here, and then I'm going to... All right, I'm going to load a different plug in here. So now I got some punch going. So I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate this track here. So I'm gonna send both kicks uh, to a new bus. Now that we got this going, so I'm gonna go all. The Five. Right. I can maybe s
I'm going to actually trim these back a little bit. So I'm going to group them. What you trimming back? I'm going to turn the levels down to the bus itself. So, so I don't get this gain structure so I can get these to hit right on this bus and keep this at zero. And then I'm going to... looking good all right I think this uh, we got these hats here some stuff I forgot I even put in there to start <laughs> selling them out here oh yeah who did that me <laughs> All right, so the, I like to do these on hot, this on hi hats sometimes. So, all right. So we got this hi hat part, right? I'm gonna use this plugin by Waves called uh, Brower Motion, which is really cool. What? That's crazy. Yeah. So let's get into the earth. <laughs> So it's really cool. I'll show you what this thing does. Uh, I will, I will mute the first panner. Okay. So, so this, you can kind of hear it if you're if you're watching at home. There, it sounds like it's going in a circle, and then, yep, and then this one is the left right pan, right? And then you can put them together. So it's really uh, it's so, so, so like like dimensional dimensional exactly so in headphones this is really power uh it, it's um you can hear it more versus it being in speakers Dynamic. i would yeah. not want to hear this in the headphones i would be on the subway listen to this hi hat pan and circle around and go left to right for like yeah. i probably miss my stop <laughs> <laughs> brower motion brower motion ah, waves Cool. We'll slide this 808 back in. I'm actually going to make this go out three and four here. What's that? The 808. So I don't, I don't. You can't make my 808s louder. They're loud. Nobody can make them louder. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make it go out its own. The uh, or it doesn't hit the compressor that I have with my other drums. Yeah, it needs its own freedom. It needs its freedom to ride there. So I'm gonna send out seven, uh, thirty-seven and thirty-eight. I'm gonna duplicate this here, and I'm gonna make this thirty-seven and thirty-eight. Do you do Oop. you think crunching eight oh eights makes them pronounce more through iPhones? Um, yeah, if you distort them in the mid range. But I like to do it with like um like two different ways. So there's there's two different mindsets, I guess. Um I like to cut pretty much everything above uh 100. So I want to see if and it depends on the 808 too. So cut everything above 100? For to get the so I'm going to do it it's basically in parallel in a way. So Okay. So if it hits high notes if it's like then in, then You're right. Yeah, you miss the the higher octave, correct? So, to so let's see if we can we can. So this is it's it's hard to hear it on on. So I like to cut everything below thirty hertz, and then now this is just the rule of thumb. This is not always so. 
Because we can solo. You can hear us taking that. Yep. So then I can... I would do this in more of the production stage and then layer this. So I'm going to see if I can... I feel you. Kind of experiment but like if I just wanted the sub frequencies this is the information that the sub will see but now you see that there's we're missing 150 but like by the bathroom yeah I think I'm, I know that song that's that Disney record that's that Disney record <laughs> So, <laughs> my kid was playing that for two hours a day. <laughs> so the 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 goal here for me when I mix 808s is I wanna I wanna get it so there's no dynamic in the sub, okay? Um, so it would always be there in that low frequency. So I'm gonna take this off here. And and I'll have two of them. When you say no dynamic in the sub. You you mean moving it to like so it's only like boom in the sub, and then the the note dynamic is somewhere else. Yes. Yeah, so so the, the subsonic frequencies, 100 hertz and below, mm -hmm. will always be like a pillar, always be called, and then that can get layered in because you know with 808s, like you were just talking about, like when it goes to a higher pitch or something, right? Or um sometimes the notes are louder than others right like if it's a really really low sub you don't really hear it yeah but then the, like the next note will come in it'll be like hella loud right? yeah and it's like what happened there yeah it's it gets distracting so the goal is to um sh like eliminate that dynamic and get it to be super tight so you get the super low rumble out of the sub always in the 808 and then that dynamic that you hear in the change of the note can be another track that has that dynamic but doesn't have any of the sub in it so okay, like yeah, under yeah. and below won't be there because that's in the other track but anything that's over 100 hertz will be on the other one get dynamic so you start layering it with bass banging but i'm not getting like the notes pronounced i want i just start layering it with another sound and just roll the low off yes yeah, this is the same that's the quick quick fix yeah and i and this is just a technique from like dance music stuff because I produce a lot of EDM yeah, stuff. You kill it on the dance stuff. So it's so I'm I'm just trying to apply that technique into all, even bass guitar. You can do this, you know, when there's it, it just so you can have that sub frequency. So like right now, I'm listening to just the the bass through the sub, and then this. I hit is that that's higher, right? And then, it ain't that high. and then this is an also a game you play with with level and gain structure. So if you notice on this meter right here, the average loudness is about negative fourteen LUFS, right? So the goal with Spotify and everything is you're trying to want that your average level to be throughout your whole song to be negative uh, fourteen LUFS, right? So when I'm doing music like this, to be able to get that level to be that loud and consistent, the most headroom in your mix is taken up by your low end, right? So if you can get that in the, the tightest dynamic possible, you can then control yeah, how, how exactly. you. So it's not being so dynamic, taking up all your headroom and hitting your master compressor or any of the other bus compressors it's in a nice little tube that then you can control and then you can you can set like i know once i get my gain structure right to a proper space i can get everything set at a certain level and then when i turn up my dial i know my base is i always talk about this like i bake a cake from the bottom up so i start with from the ground up so I start with the uh, with the low end, and I get that solid, and I use all the headroom I can, and I try to get my LUFS to be in a certain way when my low end's right in that, uh, just the low end and the kick and everything and the, and the drums, and then I can 
start cutting out a hundred and below over over every other sound unless it's like um like a synth sound or a big pad sound so that's that's deep so not only do you i love that we're taking this time to just talk about the bass the bass yeah. does, the bass deserves what we're saying right now. So I, I love that we're taking this time to just have this moment with the bass. But but <laughs> for real, like it's like the bones and this, it's so important. It is, especially in uh, today's music. Yeah, it, it, I, and I, it always was to me. But I come from the Midwest, and we, Southern hip hop was a big influence. So it was like bass, bass, bass. But um, not only are you saying that you take time to give bass space, you're also saying you will go to visit other instruments. And make sure that it, even if it ain't even playing in that range, you would take it out. Because, like, certain synths need to hit that. They need to have low tone, too. Right, totally. And you want to cut it out always. But, like, just like you said, like, even hi-hats and stuff, like, you'll be amazed if you get it on big monitors and you didn't roll off under, like, 200 hertz or something and then you play it on big speakers. You'll just, if you sold a hi-hat, you would probably hear... Because it just noise down it was there. hitting it was in the in the Dang. it could be it could have been the noise in the drum machine that it was sampled from you know what i mean yeah even though that there's no information on there the machine was producing a 60 hertz tone but you didn't hear it and then you're wondering why your your track's so muddy it's because you have all this little tiny low end over a bunch of things that just adds up crazy now, now see i i love that you told me that but then i hate it I feel like I'm gonna spend an extra hour on my mixes and like <laughs> let me make sure that when I sample this and it didn't have no <laughs> That's not your job though. All this those stuff to engineers clean though. I try to say like We know, love getting them clean. I, that's what I'm saying. Right? But it's you know. information, man. It's data to make you better. So it's like I could like, okay, yeah. I don't have to roll it off. I I save somebody. I save this work for somebody else. Or yeah, no, or it's, it's just no. now something that you can be conscious of when you're when you're doing it, right? You can be yeah. like, oh, oh, that that could probably use it, you know. But if you're not feeling it or hearing it in the moment, you know, yeah. it's not mission critical, you know. Learning things out here, y'all see this? Facts, this okay. Is, this is difficult. Yes. <laughs> Presets. Hold on. Hold on. With that being said. That's Stream your songs. No one can. No. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to set this here. Look ahead up. And I'm going to turn, use this limiter to my advantage here. And then I'm going to turn this down. Okay, see, that got a little hot. All right. So now I'm going to start trimming some of this. Maybe I'll use a uh, dynamic EQ here called F6. Let's see. So we can see we got a huge bump. All right, in our low end, of course, because this is what we're working on. So... And then I can just compress 40 hertz a little bit. Okay, another fun fact. Um, f uh, s certain frequencies, or all frequencies, have a wavelength to them that are defined by a certain amount of time between the peaks and the troughs. Um, and those are defined in milliseconds. So we know a 20 hertz uh waveform has a wave cycle of about 50 milliseconds right can you do with that information so you'll know if you want to create more punch on something right if you want the full audio spectrum to pass through meaning 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz that means if you set your attack on your compressor to be 50 milliseconds you're allowing a 20 hertz waveform to go through a full cycle, right? So you won't be activating, or that's the first point in which that compressor will act in or engage is after a full cycle of a 20 hertz waveform. So if you do this with other frequencies, so for example, we have a 40 hertz sine wave here that needs to be uh, dynamically controlled. So 20 hertz is 50 milliseconds, so 40 hertz is gonna be 25 milliseconds. So then we know that if we set our attack on our compressor at 25 milliseconds, it's going to be catching 40 hertz.
right? So let's see if we can demonstrate that and you can audibly hear what this is doing. So this is 50 hertz. That's deep. Or I'm sorry, 50 milliseconds. So you can even you can hear it, right? You can hear um, the punch come through, and then the compressor hits at 50 milliseconds and at 40 hertz. Let's see if you guys can hear that. I mean, you can hear it. I can hear it farting out my subwoofer because it's a little too much, right? <laughs> For real. So now if I can drop this down to 25. So you can see, so you can hear it catching a little bit cleaner. Yeah. So you can experiment with those techniques. So if you want to learn how to dynamically control certain frequency ranges with a, a powerful tool like a dynamic EQ or a multiband dynamics processor, um, these are kind of techniques you can use. So even 80 hertz is going to be 12.5 milliseconds. So, and and this is what why uh, you know if you hear oh nine milliseconds, 13 milliseconds on compressors and stuff like that to get like punch. This is why because like the punch of a kick in a rock song right is around 80 hertz to 100 hertz. So then if you set your attack of your compressor around 13 uh, milliseconds, you're going to let part of that transient come through which is the click and then it's going to grab the meat uh, of the kick so then you can dynamically control that a little bit and turn it up and make it louder so so now we have a I just want to know what's the wall shaking frequency. See, if I, I gotta put my headphones in because if my room starts rumbling, I'm like, this, this is right. Yeah, that's right. And then it's like, this is 60 like hertz this room. He said 60 hertz is the room shaking frequency. Yeah, that one, that one, bumps a lot. So, I'm still listening to that. So let's have my kick in. Sub part. Too much. Bass. Never too much bass. But now I'm levering it out. So, like I'm saying, I'm st I'm literally monitoring just through my subwoofer right now, so I can hear what the low end is doing with each other. So I got the the punch of the kick. So now I can go back to my kick drum a little bit and take. Uh -oh. So I probably got a little build up of 40 hertz in my kick drum, so let me go ahead and well, cut a little bit of that out there. Uh, uh. Nice. Now we're talking. So now let's go over here and uh, see if this needs the 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 high um sub um needs a little oh we'll just go ahead and take I'll go ahead and uh low cut this up to um one fifty So then we get the top of the sub, right?
right? So now we got that, which is um, more of the higher frequencies that we're going to pop through on these laptops. So then we can use a plug-in like uh, Vitamin, right, to then harmonically distort some of those upper frequencies. Right? Definitely. Heck yeah. I sounds like that more than the whole 808. Badass. Lightly. So then, we can blend these together. So then, again, you can use uh, dynamics to control this. So I'll just use an L1 real quick. L3. It's a good one. So you can kind of set a ceiling here, and then I can take the low end, combine them back together. We just got to check and see low, lat mon low latency monitoring is on so we can get everything to talk together. Or wait, delay compensation, not low latency. Yeah, right? Mom's got to go off, right? Come yeah. On. Let's see. Make sure. Okay. Yeah, that's better. You prefer delay compensation? Yes. Working sure. with it? Yeah, for sure. Not recording with it. But, yeah. But like, and low latency. I turn low latency monitoring off when I record. Um, low latency monitoring is the one that like lies about the timing. Right? It sucks because you start adjusting two things yeah. that have a relationship with low latency monitoring, and then when it's like you send it somewhere else, and they're like, oh, and like ah. yeah, and then you have to like start shifting things by uh, uh, the the playback engine. So if it's like you had you were off by, or you were recording at a higher buffer speed, so it's like uh, ten twenty four samples, uh -huh. and you had low latency monitoring on, and then you were recording. You're not supposed to record ten twenty four. No, you're supposed to record as way too high. Yeah, low as possible, yeah. but then sometimes your computer can't handle it, um, depending on how you have your system set up. So then you'd have to go back and shift everything you record back. Mm -hmm. um, Ten yeah, twenty four yeah, samples to the left. Yeah, and that's what delay compensation is supposed to do. Um, but when you when you do, <laughs> but when you do it when you record funny, then it's kind of hard to fix those things. But we're gonna we're gonna uh, plug home right here uh, for the killer system we have here. So we have this thing called SoundGrid, which is um, all Cat Six interfaced, uh, okay. and you can route everything uh, through it. So right now, I'm doing this whole stream and mixing everything through a single Cat Six cable on my computer. So no Apollo, no Digi Design. Mm. I'm using an Ethernet cable that's going into a central grid right here called SoundGrid. And that's what, the, on this machine, is what this is here. This is the SoundGrid mixer. So we got our both of our microphones, and then we have uh, my computer uh, is playback. So uh, That's cool, man. Right? But the, this, the cool part is that there's zero latency because the LV1 mixer in SoundGrid has its own server. So it's processing all the audio fully independent from Pro Tools. So I can monitor directly from the mics and have Pro Tools going through that mix cord, I mute the tracks within Pro Tools, so you're not hearing the playback of the tracks through Pro Tools in that uh, delay. You're hearing the direct signal, and you can, yeah, do things that you usually can't do with a normal setup. At six. Come on. And that means if you want to be a oh. member at home, uh, come down here and check this out. Anybody with a laptop, like, we could be collaborating right now. If he had an Ethernet cable, we just plug him in, and then he can send me 32 channels from his computer directly to mine with no interface, zero latency, and we can collaborate in a whole different way that is not really possible before. Hey, I'm trying to do that when we get done with this, because that's crazy right now. It's pretty wild. That's it's crazy. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Continuing on.
Go. So we got it's bumping. I'm gonna put a little EQ on my on on my uh, master here um, for a her a frequency that I don't usually like in this kind of music is around uh, 225 hertz. We got our hi hats cracking. Yeah. There we go. That's a big snare. Okay. I got that from Zed. Yes. The good one. The middle? Yeah. That's the middle snare. You recognize it? I know where he got it from. Where he get it from? Uh, splice. That guy's dope. I don't even use Splice. It's pretty good. I know, but I don't want to sound like everybody else. Preach. That's my thing. It's just easy to go and find, like, anything like you're you're pre like not just like yeah there's the hot packs that everyone gets right um but then if it's it's like i was looking for like a country swing beat like yeah. just because like a temporary like, like placeholder yeah right. place out, yeah and then i was just like country beat and you know like it's right shuffle there and then there's like a bunch of like perfect. That's all I needed. Yeah, I, I understand you know? the strengths. I'm. It's just at this point, it's like I feel like you can get lost in the the shuffle, you know, whatever. Just because it's great quality right here for whatever a month. So if if I go to a meeting and I press play, and like I've used some samples from there that some of my friends are like I got this from. I'm like, yo, that's so good. I was like, just give me that, man. You know what I mean? Because I'm like a rebel. And I'm like, I like that. And I and I created a song to it. And I've, this is a hit. But I've been in meetings and I met people and they would play their song. And it's the same loop. Heck yeah, man. In the same. I've had that happen too, too. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I realize I'm like, yo, I can't even like, like little great stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like placeholder stuff, cool. But I can't be like, oh, Lamont came in here and played. Eight splice loops. You know what I mean? Like, like no, preach. I, I just preach. Can't do that. I can't oh. allow that to. If I if that requires me working one level harder, or even hiring people to come in and do what I want to buy on splice for ten dollars, mm -hmm. then just so I can keep my difference in the music business, then I have to do that. You That's see, I feel today. Do you see what these a real guy in the industry is talking about? This is what I'm always preaching. It's because, you know, as being original and, like, really coming up with your own stuff and not, like, just doing the easy way out and making it, you know, 
just I mean, just because you can. I mean, you, just because you can download a pack and like make a song out of it. You know, you you never want to like be. Oh, I know where you got that sample from. To a certain degree, you know, like at and at the same time, it's like it's almost like a race to whoever gets it out first because yeah, you know what I mean mm-hmm. because. The average listener at the end of the day is gonna have no fucking idea yeah. where this comes from. Yeah, we were just talking care. about like the executives. They don't give a shit like where you came up with that oscillators and like, you know, making the perfect kick drum. It's like, no, it's like yeah. does it is there a kick drum in the song, right? But you know, yeah, that's that's something to, you know, strive for when you're producing is to be original and if you're going to use the a sample and stuff from them, which I mean, don't get me wrong, I use I use it all the time, right? I, it's wrong. I just think you can get lost in not existing with Correct. different. Yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and there's something to be said about like sounding current and all this stuff and um you can I find like you can get people excited by using sounds that sound similar to people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, s- and still bring your creative, you know, your musicality to it, you know, because I can use the same song or the same loop or whatever. And just because of my mixing ability can make it sound completely different yeah. and bang way harder than, you know, most people can. So that's for me, that's been my, calling card is you know when i press play just immediately it's just you know that much more of a dramatic difference in yeah like sound quality right so um find your voice in what you're going to do but at the same time you know find that obscure pack that no one's using and make that cool you know yeah so look at that preaching cool stuff today boom message (laughs) 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 Uh, okay so where are we up five minutes five minutes let's get these horns going Compression on the horn section here. I'm going to show, I don't know if you know this one, Lamont, but this is a little EDM trick. It's a free plugin out there. Go get yourself this one. Um, it's called the Dimension Expander. This is like by far my favorite plugin because um, it just makes everything sound more better. If anyone, okay, never mind. That's that. It's online. <laughs> Stop. Stop the live, everybody. It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> um, so let's see. So Dimension Expander. Okay. Okay. Without it? Wait, where's, where's, where, where, where are we at? Where's, Play it without it. Where's my horns? Okay, there we are. Ready? with it yep big big di- without it and then there's there's a, dr- a wet and dry knob so you can you know dry wet and then there's a size that you can ca- kind of change the shape of it Without it, so it kind of add some width to it, and then uh, let's control this with a little compression here. Maybe a fast attack.
Okay. So that's better here. Maybe take a little 1.2K out. Sorry, 2.1K. Okay, so this is bef uh, before. Ooh. Gain structure, that's why. Um, and then... Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. So after that, I like to do some stereo imaging stuff, and this will be the last thing we'll touch on today. Um, so then that kind of adds some some width to the stereo field. So then um, I like to find, like, the sweet spot of this thing. So I can so I got four bands. I can full, and, and these are variable. I can switch them around. So... So I like to find a spot. That I can make dead mono. Mono. So this is allow you this is allowing you to separate bands and then make certain Frequent parts of the fre frequency spectrum either more mono or well, I do this a lot with on vocals, background vocals, reverbs and delays and things like that to create space. I was on six. Yeah, so like this, I'm I'm. You can see by the waveform here yeah. between 500 hertz and 1.3 k. This is what it was before, right? I can collapse that down to be dead mono. So, or if this ends up being planes back in, in mono, that frequent, excuse me, will, range will always be there. Then I can be a little more generous with the more higher frequencies. Spread those out a little bit. And I can take below that maybe make that a little mono or spread it out so sick so let's see what we got Okay. There you got some guitar. So this is a good example, right? So you can take then the the guitars, right? And uh let's put these back. And then we'll listen to um, the the horn, and then we'll listen to the um, the the guitar. All right? Oop, wrong one. So. So I can get that meter of the guitar to be on the outside of these horns. So That'd that be great. so that that <laughs> so what we made mono in the horns, I can then take that same frequency range and make it more stereo in the guitar. And then we can take, um, you know, 
That's crazy. That's the kind of stuff I would, like think about, and I know I want to do it, but I'm like. So there's now we can beef up the guitars a little bit. I know I'm just getting too much, having too much fun here. So. Then you can start EQing differently, right? So since I know, like, if I spread something out, right, if I boost, overly boost in that same frequency, I know it's not going to clutter up the middle because I spread those frequencies out so I can boost it and it'll, it'll sound like it came out the stereo field louder. It's because we're using a, the stereo image plugin to separate things. So let's see what this kind of works with. Come on. And and then uh to show you guys, we'll put the the vocals in real quick and uh, kind of get you a little banging. Whoa, vocals! See what happens when you don't touch the vocals the whole session. So let's uh, change uh, this gain structure. But this kind of goes to what I said in like previous previous mixes. You you pick and choose the most important elements that you want in your song. And then you kind of work on those. You know, there's two different thoughts of that. Everyone says, some people say, put everything in at one time and never solo anything. I mean, I, I get what they mean by that, but at the same time, it's like... Who says that? You know, a lot of mixers say just to keep everything in, and so you never lose sight of the whole, the bigger picture, so you don't, like, just solo something down and get, like, totally, war, like, tunnel vision on one sound, and then you everything the whole song is thrown off right you spent an hour eq in that kick drum but that had nothing it didn't do anything to add to the song right yeah. so but like it, it makes total sense but at the same time it's like i also like to break it down so then i'm not really distracted by you know oh i hear there's way too much high end in those guitars or those vocals are too sharp and i really can get it to like impact create the foundation and then if I have the foundation, anything else that I put around it is just like icing on the cake. So usually it's like vocal dead in the middle with the, the 808, the drums, the snare drum, and the hi-hats. If I can get that picture sounding, cracking out the speakers, super loud, all my game structure is right, everything else, I just like pull up and I mix around that. Oops, sorry. No, no, I'm just saying it's, it's about the feeling too. Like sometimes like people... I feel like I've worked with some mixers and they didn't really live with the demo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like they was like, okay, I hear it. No, it's not good. I can make it more dynamic, but it's like, do you know how good this feels? Right. If you just feeling the music. Totally. You know, sounds like other people. And then they send me like mixers that's just like, oh my God, like you didn't like listen to this. Right. You just kind of just went your own, own way. You yeah. Change the relationship and the feelings. Like, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So it was like, it's a delicate balance. Like you, you want you want to stay as close to the original or the demo. It's because that's the one they've been listening to for six months. You know, five times like a day. I hate the demo. Right. Yeah. And it's like just just do your thing. Right. But if it's like we like the demo, we just know it can be better. Then it's like I'll just either ask for stems that way or give, let me have the session of how you did it. So then if I if I know that's what you want and there's just some issues that need to that yeah. I need to address to get that feeling uh clearer then i'll do that and i i always put the rough mix in and i'm always like i try to get everything set to make it sound as close to that as possible and then go, and then go I, I right a lot of people do that yeah the best people i work with kind of do that you, you want to match that even if i don't use what they did i'm gonna make sure that mine sounds at least like five percent close to that like if I A B of them and I'm like, oh, mine might sound a little brighter, you know. But the balance of everything is going to be the same, and then from there, it's like, okay, how do we make it a little better? So let's play this with the vocal. Uh, I'll adjust it as it goes. And
That's killer. Thank you, man. <laughs> That's so cool. Yo, I got to bring you a mix. Come on, please bring me a mix, friend. Please. Come on, bro. We hungry out here, man. We hungry for some good music and some good producers to work with. Come on, brother. I know. We'll do something crazy. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, bro, thank you so much oh, for being a part you. of this. I really do. Um, plug -ins come on. Philosophy. I'm ready to go. Yes. To make awesome. something right now. That's See that? That's what we're here at home. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, spread the love and uh, spread techniques and just work on some cool music. So, uh, thank you so much, Falcone here, from helping our music evolve in East Nashville, Tennessee. Tune in next week uh, where we'll have another song to mix. So, have a good weekend. Uh, drive safe. And uh, peace. Turn up. Turn up. Say your diary with the world or have to eat it for your lunch. Sing your tune to your friends or trip and fall into your crush. So I know we're probably not on the stream anymore, but... Looks like we are. <laughs> yeah, that's the delay. But see, oh. so I would go like this, and I would put a C6 on...